Choose to be on E. Part one. Part two is next week. The whole message is Sunday night, right? Pretty cool, huh? Check this out. How many people in here have drive? Yeah. Most people know that. <laughs> Everyone who drives know. Have you ever been almost on E? And you're going to do everything you can do to stay off of it? You stop accelerating on hills and you coast? Right, yes. stuff like that. Turn off the AC. Turn off the stereo. Even though it doesn't make a difference. You're trying to <laughs> use less lift, less, less uh, uh, gas. Cause you don't want to run out, right? You don't want to run out of gas. You're on the side of the road. See, being on E though, it's not it's not about gas. It's like running on empty. Has anyone ever felt like they're running on empty? Yes. No empty. Your brain wore out. Your body's wore out. It's just, well, I'm gonna help you, right? This thing, the e is about God's principles on work and giving. Tonight's work, next week's giving. And it's going to keep you off of E. It's going to keep you full. So check this out. We're going to start where I start quite frequently because this is where my mind always goes. It goes to the beginning, right? Adam and Eve. Okay? Before the sin, what was Adam supposed to do? Work, right? He names the animals. He lives alongside the animals. He's been given all the vegetation and grass and all that to eat. The Bible's clear, you know. Eat of the trees, dude. Live alongside the animals. The animals can eat of the trees. See, what most people don't realize with all that, Adam was a vegetarian. He ate of the trees, right? And he's supposed to be working. There's no sin. Just him working, happy. He's walking side by side with the Lord. They sin. Sin comes into the world. Adam gets cursed, right? Adam and Eve get cursed. He gets cursed with painful childbirth. Give me painful childbirth. Let's go with that curse real quick. How many ladies know that nowadays women are doing everything they can do not to have a painful childbirth? They give you shots. Well, I don't even know. I'm just had a baby. I don't know what it's called. They give you shots, shots to like numb your whole body. And it's a curse. It hurts, right? Well, I'm going to read. Here's Adam's curse. Uh, Genesis chapter 3, 17 to 19, it says, And to the man he said, Since you listen to your wife, make from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat, the ground is cursed because of you. All your life you will struggle to scratch a living from it. It will grow thorns and thistles for you. Though you will eat of its grains, by the sweat of your brow <coughs> will you have food to eat until you return to the ground from which you were made. For you were made from dust, and to dust you will return. His curse was it's going to be hard to get that food. It's going to be hard to get the vegetation from the trees, from the ground, from the grain. Think about that now. When you don't have any money, how hard is it to eat? It's pretty hard, right? So now he's got a real problem. This dude's been kind of coddled, right? God's just letting stuff grow everywhere. He just picks, you know? It don't grow now. They're in the desert. If you look at the Bible, what do you think of the desert? They're in the desert. He can't grow food. Pretty crazy, huh? Pretty big curse. Well, here's the thing with curses. You may be wondering, a lot of people do, why did God curse the ground and not curse Adam? Well, in the Bible, anytime someone's cursed, they always curse your grandkids. Kind of crazy, huh? Anybody remember the story of Noah when uh, he passed out drunk and his son saw him naked and made fun of him yeah. to his brothers? You remember yeah. that story? Well, he cursed that guy's son, Canaan. But the reason is, if your son's cursed, that makes you look like a bad dad, right? right. So you curse the grandkid to show everybody he's a bad dad. <laughs> and now you're all thinking, right? You got, if you got some bad parents, you probably got some decent grandparents. If you got some bad grandparents, you probably got some decent parents, right? Everybody knows what you're thinking about it now. So here's the thing. Adam don't have a dad. The closest thing to a dad he has is God. Well, God can't be reflected bad because he didn't do anything bad. So the thing is, he curses the ground and he curses all of Adam's children for all of eternity. Because the thing was, the first sin, we all, and everyone who knows anything about God, knows Adam messed up. That's a long curse. I would hate to make a decision that thousands and thousands of years from now, people are just walking around and throwing my name out there. Hey, y'all know Dustin? That dude messed up forever ago. He's horrible. So that's why the ground was cursed. That's why the hard work has been put in. And that's why we 
all got some hard work to do in life. And it's a shame, right? People don't like working hard. Let me, I'm going to give you a little bit of a synopsis of myself when it comes to work. Since I was 18 years old, I have always worked between 50 and 60 hours a week. Always. And I am 32 years old. That's 14 years. Get straight A's. Y'all want to do good in school. Trust me. I worked in a furniture store 6 10 hour shifts a week for years. I managed a, a customer service manager at a grocery store 36 hours a week. But I also worked 20 hours a week as a janitor elsewhere. I was a roofer before. I was telling Mariah earlier. I worked 42 straight 14 hour days. Right? It's quite a bit. I worked in factories, and now I deliver medical equipment. And I do that currently 40 hours a week. But if you put into all the church work I do here and at home, being a youth pastor, that's an additional 30 hours a week. So right now I'm doing about seven. And on top of that, yes, I'm a man. I cook my own dinner. I do my own laundry. I mow my own lawn. I know how to do everything because my mom makes sure I know how to do it. I work nonstop. If I'm not here, I'm at home working on this, writing or planning or things like that. We have the revival. I took half days of work. And what do I do in my free time? I work. You know why? Working's good. It's very good. Right? Does this shock you all? Working's very good. You see, this country was built on hard work. This was a wilderness. And look what it turned into. It's crazy, huh? All the work that went in. But unfortunately now, a lot of hard work went into building this country. Now it's inhabited by a lot of lazy people. A lot of lazy people. How many people know somebody's really lazy? Jacob. Almost everyone thinks that didn't know anyone lazy. So. You're lazy. You're too lazy to put your arm up? Well, you're unfortunate. But God's let's See what the wisest man who ever lived had to say. Does anyone know who that is? King Solomon. The Bible says he's the wisest man who ever lived or ever will live. So let's see what he has to say. Are you ready? Tasha, about work? Proverbs chapter 6, 6 through 11. It says, take a lesson from the ants, you lazy bones. <laughs> Learn from their ways and become wise. Though they have no prince or governor or ruler to make them work, they labor hard all summer, gathering food for the winter. But you lazy bones, how long will you sleep? When will you wake up? A little extra sleep, a little more slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. Then poverty will pounce on you like a bandit. Scarcity will make you like an armed robber. Wow. So the Bible back is backing this up, right? Work is good. Hard work is good. Don't be lazy or you're going to be poor. Like, this is normal stuff people should know, right? Here's the thing. We get ourselves into a spot of wishing. We wish we were rich. We wish we had a nice car. We wish we had a mansion. I spent a long time wishing and a long time praying for God to give me stuff that I didn't deserve or work for. Anybody ever done one of those? 11 11. I don't know what that is. Well, making a wish? When I was a kid, we threw pennies in fountains. That's right. Well, not we. Actually, it was more like people threw quarters in fountains, and I would get kicked out of the mall. I watched the square mall and that fountain arms so I would be in the fountain, collect the pocket change, go to Taco Bell. That's how I roll. Because I didn't want to work because I was lazy when I was a teenager. So, let's just be, I'll just be for real. Uh, but check it out. I used to, and I'm going to be honest, this is an embarrassing thing to say, I was always a little overweight in school, and I would pray, God, let me wake up with a six pack. <laughs> and my belly was about to there. And I'm going to be for real for you. There's a lot of older folks in this church that pray something similar to that. Lord, help me lose that 10 pounds. The doctor can tell me to lose. So I get up this cholesterol medicine. I know I messed up. Get three plates going crowd. I know I messed up. Eat Krispy Kreme for breakfast. But Lord, let these calories feed my body. Let me lose some weight. And I'm here to tell you, first of all, I used to pray that. Number one, never happened, right? You don't wake up with abs. Number two, if it did, 
Okay, if I was 16 and I woke up with abs when I went to bed with a belly, my mom would have me at the doctor because she would have thought I had a disease. <laughs> Who goes to bed and loses 20 pounds in their sleep? You wake up, that's like a flesh eating virus. Okay? And so you gotta work at it. You gotta work at it. Now here's the thing. Here's how we should pray for all of this, okay? You ready? Because we all kind of were in agreement at the beginning. We don't like work. It's not fun. It was fun. You know what we call work? You know what we call fun. Fun. Now, fun and work is fun to be called fun and not work. So, I'll give another example here of myself. Most everyone in here knows in my younger days I battled addiction with alcohol. I battled drug use, stuff like that. And I got way overweight. I was 40% body fat. 40%. Chris Bennett, when you still have a picture of us, I went 40% body fat. This is a good day, because I had shaved. Normally I didn't shave, and I had a big bald spot. And I took a bath, or a shower. I didn't do that much back then, because I had a drinking problem. And uh, if you know an addict, they probably don't take as many showers as they want you to think they do. I just didn't. Hey, I wasn't a part of the 25% back then. If you were last week, you know what I'm talking about. People would wash their hands up and they go to bath. I was dirty, because I was an addict. And check this out. You see that? Wow, the screen stretched a little. I look even worse. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. When God healed me of alcoholism, I've been walking around telling people I was a beer bed. And I've been walking around telling people my apartment was trash because I would pass out. And you know what? As an alcoholic, I was content saying that. But one month sober after God healed me of my addiction, that was no longer a beer bed. That was a fat belly. That was no longer I pass out my apartment trash because I'm nasty. I'm a disgusting human being, okay? Here's the thing. My mom helped me clean my apartment up. And you want to know what she said to me? She'll be dead in my eyes. The woman who raised me told me I could be anything I wanted to be and said, I'll stop by once a month to help you clean your apartment. I know you really can't handle that on your own. How bad is that, right? I can't wash a dish or clean a toilet. Like my mom. Dude, I was disappointed in myself. Let me tell you what I pray. Let me tell you what I pray. This is important. I pray, God, please help me have the desire to want to change. Help me want to work hard. And I started working out. And I would pray, God, I want to lose weight. Please help me like the foods that are good for me. Please help me be able to say no to the foods bad to me. Please help me quit smoking. Please help me work hard. Help me want it. Let me be different from everyone. You know, there was, and I don't think anybody's seen a TV show, it's called Seinfeld. It was back when I was in school, so to y'all, it's ancient history. But there was an episode where there was a character named George. He was a real loser, right? And one day he said, you know what? I'm gonna do everything the opposite of my natural reaction because everything, nothing ever works out for me. And that's what I pray too. I say, God, Every situation I'm in remind me to choose the opposite of what I feel I want or what I feel is, is good for me. Because I make nothing but bad choices and nothing good's ever happened to me. And guess what? My prayers work because I don't, that's still up. That's still on the screen, for real. I don't look like that no more. Okay? I looked way better. See, that was a long time ago. I looked better a few years ago before I got married and had a baby. Grew up here for some reason. Uh, I made a big change, okay? Re I mean, in reality, not to boost my own ego, I got my six back. But in my original prayer of please let me lose the weight, I was 155 pounds and I wanted to be 140 pounds with a six pack. But I had a six pack, weighed 200 pounds, all muscle. I was getting modeling offers. Dude, it was, people liked me. For the first time in life, people thought I was good looking. I enjoyed it, okay? My whole life changed completely. And I did nothing but pray, God, help me work hard. Help me want to work hard. Help me want to change. Give me knowledge. Give me the desire of knowledge. And let me use all of this for you in a positive way to show young people that you can do good things with the Lord on your side. You don't have to be a failure like I used to be. Simple prayer and putting the work and effort in. I ain't gonna lie. I like working now. That's why I do it so much. And so, here's what I'm saying about running on empty. I ain't running on pubes. I get up 
Let's see, like, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do tomorrow. Just for an example, I'll get up maybe at five or four in the morning and feed my baby after I go to bed at 11 at night. May lay back down, may not. I'll definitely be up at six to where I get everything ready for the day for me, Amanda, and the baby. And then at seven, well, seven, I'm gonna take uh, Kate to the babysitter. 7.45, I'll be at the gym. I'm gonna lift weights, I'm gonna do cardio. 9 a.m., I'm gonna go to work. I don't take a lunch break. I'll be off about five. I'm gonna go home, do my laundry, clean around the house. I'm gonna upload this video over here right, to YouTube. I'm gonna go in and try to schedule some fun stuff for the youth group. I'm gonna finish writing this sermon right here for Sunday. I'm gonna write the healing and anointing service thing I'm gonna do for Sunday. We're running through the night, right? This is my night. I'm gonna eat two dinners. I'm gonna eat chicken and rice and set at 5.30. And I'm gonna eat three steak wraps today. So, that's, that's my day. It's pretty busy. And I got, I'm full of energy all the time. I love it. When I'm sitting around watching TV, I'm not happy because I need something to do. And you're thinking, yeah. you're thinking I'm more aren't you? Yeah. Well, you're wrong, buddy. Because here's the thing. <laughs> I make money to pay my bills and take care of my family. And I'm doing what the Lord wants me to do with the rest of my time. It ain't even work. It's, it's going to be called fun. So, I'm going to go to the New Testament because... I know what some of you were thinking about the Proverbs stuff. You're like, that's Old Testament. Let's hear the New Testament, all right? Yeah. Christian attitudes on work. I got four examples. Colossians 3 and 23. Work willingly at whatever you do as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. That means when you're working, you work your hardest. Whether your boss is there or not. Make your best grades. Whether your parents are going to see your report card or not. You do your best, hardest work, even though sometimes you're not going to get paid. An example of that, I worked at a job where one time I was salary, where even if you work over 40 hours, you're supposed to be paid overtime, but illegally, I wasn't getting paid. Working 60 to 70 hours a week sometimes, I didn't get paid. I still have it. That was $40,000. Did it, what happened? What would you do? I worked my hardest. I'm in charge of the whole branch now, and now I'm hourly, and I get paid overtime for that. And somebody turned them in, and it wasn't me. I may get a check. I don't know. But the thing is, I work my hardest, and I run the place now. I don't even want to. I really don't. With that being said, I've never gotten a job. I've never applied for a job. And I've never not had one. Never done an interview. I've had everyone give me a job, ask me to work there. One time I put in an application. And I was given the job before they even read it. They looked at me and said, you look like you can work. And I said, well, I can. Well, you got the job. I said, cool, how much you pay? He told me. I said, not interested, and I left. And so, it was a moving refrigerator, so I guess I look like a refrigerator burger. It's not like 28, 40 years old, big five. So that's the thing, how hard do you work? Because that's, that's what people want. People don't want to want somebody working for them that wants a lot of money to do very little. See, that's been the problem in our country. So we have this big discrepancy. The average household in America, the median household, is 50,000 a year. Did you know that? 50,000 a year. The average is 69,000. You know why it's 19,000 more? Because there is a portion of our country in the hundreds of billions, and that brings the numbers up. Pretty crazy, huh? And the thing is, they do little work and lots of money, and everybody wants to be them. Let's go to the next part. Ephesians 4 28. If you're a thief, quit stealing. Instead, use your hands for good, hard work, and then give generously to others in need. That means no shortcuts. We, we, we're catching on, right? No shortcuts. Hard work. 2 Thessalonians 3 and 10. Even while we were with you, we gave you this command. Those unwilling to work will not eat. Y'all feel like What if your parents put that in order? <sighs> if you won't work around the house, you can't eat. That would be, we'd have some hungry people. <laughs> hungry people. Oh my gosh. When I was your age, oh man, I just felt old saying that. <laughs> my mom would leave me chores for the day. And my list was that long. No lie. 
every day I cleaned the whole house up and down, yard, everything. It was like five hours of work. And I got an allowance, not everybody gets it, but I got, you know, paid pretty well. I got 10 bucks a week. Now that was worth a little more back then. This was 1996. So with $10 back then, you could buy a CD, which I, last I saw for what, like $16.99? Something ridiculous. This is before iTunes, right? You had to get the CD. You couldn't even get one. You wanted one song, okay? This is the catastrophe of high school. If I wanted one song and pay for an entire CD, just for the one song, there's no CD burners, there's no downloads, no iTunes. It's not, yeah, dude, it wasn't cool at all. First Timothy 5, 18, the scripture says, you must not muzzle on to keep from eating as it turns out of the grain. And then another place, those who work deserve their pay. So, Y'all getting the hang of this, right? You want your money, you gotta work. You want your prosperity, you gotta work. And I even put it in there how to pray to get this work. But here is where it gets catchy, right? It's about the attitude. See, you can't just work hard and like it. It's about attitude. And if we're Christians, if we got Jesus Christ, He's our Savior, we got the Holy Spirit dwelling within us, then we're gonna want to be like Christ. We're gonna, our natural inclination is to want to be like Him. Well, here's Jesus, okay? Son of God. The Messiah, he, everywhere he goes to speak, he has crowds that just form, right? Crowds of people. Here's what his, first of all, he was a carpenter. Now, I know when I say that, you all think that some guy that makes furniture or lays carpet, right? That's not the case, okay? He may knew how to build furniture, but at that time, a carpenter is more like him, uh, jack of all trades. One day, he might have been uh, helping somebody build a house, roofing. The next day, he may have been helping somebody cut down a field. Carpenters during this time in that area were the hardest working profession there was and the lowest profit profession there was. Kind of makes sense considering he's humble and he worked hard. And everywhere he went, he gave people food. And on top of that, he was a servant. There's a story in the Bible where he washed the disciples' feet. You all remember that one? Wash their feet. I was thinking that they had people to wash feet back then, and they would you give them some food or whatever, or some coins. Here's the thing, all right? Picture these 12 dudes walking through the desert in the summer, no indoor plumbing, right? They've been sweating, they got the sand, like, drying up on their feet. And you can't imagine, they didn't have toenail clippers back then, right? Y'all picture this, these some nasty feet. Picture them, take shoes off, they probably like, show everybody. Nasty, stinky, dirty, sand-encrusted feet, okay, the disciples. Jesus washed them. Washed them. Could you even wash your dad's foot? Jesus washed them. There's a point to this. We're supposed to be servants. Like I said, when I'm not at my job, most of the time, I'm playing in simple church or at the church. We're supposed to be working all the time. We're supposed to be spreading the gospel. That's what we've been called to do. If you've got Christ, you've got eternal life. But the rest of your time, you're supposed to be spreading the message. You're supposed to be spreading his love to people. You're supposed to be showing them that there's a better way. People like me who was an alcoholic, nobody was knocking on my door telling me Jesus loved me. Nobody was out there trying to give me food. Nobody wanted to wash my nasty feet. Nobody. But that's what we've been called to do. I mean, for real. Even in church. I prayed one time for God to give me some direction with something. And you know what I got in that prayer? And it's a humbling prayer. It said, don't grip the microphone so tight you can't hold the broom. You're called to be a servant first. If you are a Christian, no matter who you think you are, no matter who you think God thinks you are, you are a servant first. Nobody's above cleaning the toilet. Nobody's above sweeping the floor. That's for real. I'm just as happy sweeping the floor as I am talking to the microphone. I'll do whatever God wants me to do. I, if he, if he, I thought he wanted me to wash y'all's stinky feet, I would do it. I would remain in the 25% that washes their hands after I will be real. But we're supposed to be servants. Think on that. Could you imagine? Just recently, two weeks ago, our last weekend, the church volunteered to do uh, this work picnic and work out there. And they were going to pay the church. We're going to give all the money to missionaries. Does anybody know why we didn't do it? People 
who wouldn't help. No, there were 10 people who volunteered to help. I needed like 40. Now it was 12 hours in the sun, and it's hard work. But at the end of the day, people wouldn't help. And you know what? That's got me a little scared. I'm going to be transparent. You all know how we go to the North football games. We got to have like 20 people, okay? They're going to give us like two grand for the youth group. That was a conviction, the camp, getting lights. You know, have fun, right? We can do some Two grand. I'm not confident we can get 20 people every day. I've already talked to another youth group that if I can't do it, they're going to split it with us and bring half the people. That's bad, right? Like, we should bring that kind of money in the church from the school. And on top of that, we should be out there talking to teenagers, like, spreading God's love. I'll be for real. God showed me a vision today. By the time school's here, we're going to be having a specific ser service, trying to bring everyone in here who's not a Christian. How many people are confident in your work ethic to do what God wants? That if this room was filled with all the people at your school who may not like you or they may think call you names because you're churchy or if uh, the people that you know you used to be friends with, or, what if those, all those people were here and you were way outnumbered? Are you going to stay home? Or are you going to be here? Because a lot of them are going to come to this altar. Because the thing we all have in common is Christ is Lord. Teens are hurt. Half teens' parents are divorced. There's a large portion of teens' parents who are on drugs or alcohol. There's a large portion of teens' whose parents smack them around for no reason. People are hurt. And I hope, I hope that wasn't too, that didn't come across too harsh. I'm being for real. But the thing is, no one's above working. No one's above helping their brothers and sisters in Christ. No one's above spreading the gospel. Jesus showed us how to do it all. We're supposed to follow him. And uh, I got two more parts, and that's it. There's a phrase that always was said, forever and ever. I don't hands, I don't mind. If you may even notice it, when you're working, when you're at school, maybe your mind dresses the stuff it shouldn't. Sometimes, maybe. But probably less than when you're at home alone. I mean, for real, I'm going to say something for real, okay? Nobody ever had to erase their internet search history when they were working, right? That's the idle hands, idle mind thing. Nobody had to erase a text message when they were working. Nobody had to apologize for something they said when they were working. You see, God gave us stuff to do because at the, at the end of the day, we need him because everyone is bad people. David said he was wicked in his mother's womb. And he's one of the most anointed men in the Bible, king of Israel. Wicked in his mother's womb. And because of that, we're going to do some bad things. So if our time is filled up with work, to get money for what we need, if our, the rest of our time is filled up with doing the Lord's work, people ain't, we ain't going to be able to hurt people. We're going to be able to help people. Because our minds are going to be right. And uh, Proverbs 30, 7 to 9, and I'm going to close it here because this is when it's going to get to part two. Oh God, I beg two favors from you before I die. Oh, excuse me. God, I beg two favors from you, then let me have them before I die. First, help me never to tell a lie. Second, give me neither poverty nor riches. For if I grow rich, I may deny you and say, who is the Lord? And if I am too poor, I may still and thus insult God's holy name. Those two things. And I'm very comfortable with it. And it's a thing that most people will struggle with their whole life. God, please don't let me be poor. Let me work hard. Let me make enough money to pay my bills, take care of my family, put food on the table, and everything be good. God, please don't let me be rich. Because rich people fall apart fast. Like I've said before, I used to pray stupid stuff. I would pray, God, let me win the lottery. But you know what happened to me if I won the lottery? I'd be dead. Because when I was praying that, I was on a road to death because of alcohol. And I was poor. What would I have done? Uh, got some millions and wasted it. Had some pictures of me in a poor bed. Had some pictures of me doing fun stuff that later when I was broke, I'm looking back. You see, our idea 
of money and work, we put them hand in hand. But work's not about money. We work like the ant. We work as if nobody's watching. We work our hardest for the Lord. We work our hardest for the Lord. We do work, not even expecting money. We do things for other people. We shouldn't even need an allowance. We should be willing to mow our grandma's lawn and clean her gutters or wash her dishes. We should be willing to do that stuff. I'm going to end it here. And it was in that song, it was going to be what the next message is really about. Gas is four bucks a gallon. Think of that. How easy is it to go empty on a gas tank? Gas yes, four bucks a gallon. So let's say you got a 20 gallon tank. That's $80. Let's say you do that every week. Now your truck, how much is it a week on gas? I don't want to talk about it. It's over 100 a <laughs> week, right? That's a lot of gas, right? Now, if you put that in yourself, how hard is life that it can put you on empty? But here's the thing about $4 gas. If it's hard to do, you want to know what the right thing would probably be to do? Fill up your tank. Find somebody who's not doing well. Fill up their tank. And watch your situation get better. Because God blesses servants. God blesses those with the right mindset. And God blesses those who work hard. So, Chris, hit some music, lower the lights. This may not be the funnest message ever for a room full of teenagers. More arms are crossed in here than I've seen in a long time. And, you know, everybody, does anybody know anything about, uh, uh, what's it called? Oh, nonverbal communication. The first key, if you see someone cross their arms, it means they're not listening. So, just so you know, that's what that means if you're, Guys, you got a girlfriend. If her arms are crossed when she's talking to you, walk away because she's heard nothing. I didn't hear that. So, it just being for real. So, when you see the arms crossed from up here, that tells you people don't like what you're saying, and that's good. But I'm going to open the altars, and it's not just for this message. This message is important because for those of you who feel like you're running on empty, you're discouraged, you've tried everything else, you can take it from me. I only talk about myself for one reason happy. For the first time in my life, the past few years, I've been so happy. I am so blessed because of God. And I work so hard and I love it. And I'm happy. My son will not have, he'll have, I'm sure he'll say bad stuff about me. Everybody does about the parents sometimes. But he won't say I'm lazy. And he won't say, my dad's the kind of guy that goes to church, sits in the back row and walks out when it's over. My son will not be able to say those things about me. So I'm going to open the altar. If anyone needs prayer for anything, anything at all, just go ahead and come up here. And uh, thank you all.